Epitaph Scrolls. We have started reconstruction of the damage from the airship werewolf siege. The damage was minor, but the decision was made to refortify. The gargoyles tasked with construction are working non-stop. Professor Brassthorne has graciously started turning out automatons to help. He has taken up residence in the east wing of the manor, just down the hall from the arcane laboratory. The professor has unloaded many objects, tools, and machinery from the airship Dreamstrider to bolster his work in the lab. Even though the airships are gone and no sound of cannon fire is present, the great gargoyle Visago still patrols the skies, keeping ever vigilant watch over the manor as if unsettled by something unseen. Stranger even still is that the other gargoyles have taken to him as a leader, a general of sorts. The children have enjoyed the days with studies, games of chance, and experiments. Several times I have caught them trying to catch the professor's automatons in elaborate traps. Still no word from the wordsmith as he heads to the great chasm. I now keep my communications jack-o'-lantern on me at all times, waiting for any news from the Westlands. With the free time, I have spent hours leaping through the books of the library, searching for any information to the seal the Sky Wolves bear. The only account of it was just a brief entry in a book on archaic symbology that had seen time and an apparent fire. Deciding on a needed reprieve, I invited the professor to join me in the parlor. <laughs> professor, could I interest you in a brandy? By all means. Anything to finish settling my nerves. I've been working on my spider bots, but your younglings keep trying to capture them and the bots have scattered off into the dark. The curiosity of children. They just want to see how they work. I'll have the lady speak with them. Speaking of Lady Epitaph, how is she? I've not seen her in several days. She's been overseeing the repairs of the manor, directing the gargoyles, keeping the children off the scaffolding. This manor is her baby, and she cares deeply about it. Epitaph. While working on my spider bots and cleaning up the lab, I've noticed I'm in need of some supplies. Yeah, we could take a quick jaunt to the closest township. What do you need? An entire year in space has brought me to the brink of my resources. I'm glad I'm back in the realm where I can refresh my supplies. But some of the things I'm unable to fabricate in the ship, like industrial pistons and machining gauges, I need to find a place that sells some bottles and also some basic laboratory equipment. I'm not sure the village would carry much of that. Bottles and vials, sure, but gauges and pistons may require a trip elsewhere. Good evening, gentlemen. Please excuse my interruption. My lady, how wonderful of you to join us. Indeed. We've been missing your company. How go the repairs? Nearly finished, and that's what I have come to discuss. My lord, I've been reorganizing the inventory of my cauldron parlor, and I'm in need of supplies. Why the wolf will look, my lady. The professor needs supplies as well. We can handle both your needs in one trip. Well, my lord, the supplies I need can't be bought at any of the towns or villages nearby. Um, this will require a trip to... Oh no, don't say it. The Night Bazaar. Ugh, the Night Bazaar. Haven't been there since the last time I resided here in the realm. It brings back some lovely memories. It's not one of my favorite places in the realm. It'd be quite a long trip by bio horse. Professor, any chance we could procure the services of the Dream Strider? As you wish. My airship is always at the disposal of Epitaph Manor. I'll go inform the younglings of our departure. My gargoyle, Dankmar, will watch over them. Last I saw him, he was sitting on the throne pretending to command the golems around. <laughs> Very good. We'll disembark shortly then. <laughs>
the Night Bazaar, a marketplace far to the east of the manor. We first had to traverse a forest, the Forest of Aeons. Ancient and sentient, many tales have been woven about the forest, and many more tales to be born and lost in its endless life. Beyond, we traverse the mossy ruins of the Campaign of the Bloody Temple, wayward souls still clawing at the rubble. Once we had crested the last ruin, we had to gain altitude over the fog lands, immense cemetery fields that stretched on for a numbing expanse. Hitting the sudden jet stream, the interior of the Dream Strider came alive, green lights indicating flaps, wind collectors hissing and clanging. It was as if the ship was feeding on the jet stream itself. Ascending to the upper deck, I cast my eye out beyond the portal and saw the blue smoke-like glow of the lanterns of the Night Bazaar. During the day, it is half fortress and half ghost town. The only mark to signify its existence is the large parking canopies where buccaneer, vendor, and aristocrat alike form an unspoken treaty of civility within the moorings. But once one steps beyond the wooded curtain, Bazaar becomes a frenzy. The place beyond any true governmental reign. The guards there are bought and sold on a whim. Every moment of life is a struggle in the dark marketplace of the Night Bazaar. Having attended several times prior, my mind is reminded of the smells and staunch delicacies mixed with the resonance of exotic instruments, unique dialects intertwining gracefully. My hope is that the Bazaar will relinquish the supplies needed for the Lady and the Professor easily. I may also be able to find out some information about this entity. Epitaphs, we are approaching our vector. Prepare for landing. Now remember, Professor, do not refer to me by my name or title. We find ourselves in a place that, big surprise, I'm not too well liked. It's best to keep a low profile all around. Good idea. Call me... Tony. Ah, uh, the names we used on Earth. Brilliant. Yes, call me... Peter. And call me Christine. Now, gentlemen, I leave you to your business while I attend mine. Milady. You shouldn't venture alone in a place like this. We will be better able to find what we need with some more speed if we separate. Besides, the places I must go do not welcome Lord Epitaph. But let her go. She's right on both accounts. Meet back at the Green Lion by the third stroke of the clock. Epitaph, er, Peter... How can you not worry about her like that? It's not that I don't worry. In fact, I do, greatly. It's just that she prefers to conduct her business on her own. I've tried to follow her before, and she's turned it into a game of being elusive. She will continuously try to lose me in at every turn until she is successful. Then she becomes one of the crowd with what she calls her Don't See Me spell. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone looking for her in the manor and passed her a dozen times while she sits reading a book in the library. When she finally decides she's done with the game, then she makes herself known. Apparently, it's a game her mother taught her when she was a child. Her world is full of ongoing wars, and she was raised during a time of great fear. Hiding and illusions were taught as a game, but were really serious business in case her homeland was ever invaded. 
Plus, I think she thinks it's fun. But I must admit, Tony, it does drive me mad at times. She is strongly independent. I fear it may cause her trouble someday. As do I. But the more I press to protect her, the mightier she fights to avoid protection. It's really best to just let her be and keep our minds open. If she's in distress, she'll contact us. We do have our jack-o'-lanterns, after all. Then, shall we find what we came for? Yes. Lead the way. Oh, thousands of apologies, my good sir. I didn't think you were attached to your wallet. The only reason my blade does not free your head from the rest of you is I wish to remain as unseen as possible. Go pick another pocket, Scaler. Oh, yes, my lord. Thank you for being the gentleman. That was foolish even for the likes of him. Must be hard for these creatures. But then again, the Scalers weren't known for being that, shall we say, intelligent. They get to be a nuisance. Perhaps they're all just crazy. Oh, speaking of crazy, what is that noise? And that horrid smell. Oh, cogs in heaven, not... Ladies and gentlemen, step up and see the latest, wondrous marvel that is sure to amaze even the biggest skeptic in the realm. See the greatest golem that ever come from the incredible sweatshops of Grumblum's Golems. This year's newest model of Golem, the Gilded Turd. What did he call it? Sounds like the Gilded Turd. I can see we have a few skeptics in the crowd. Step up, gentlemen, and witness the marvel that is the Gilded Turd. Crafted with the latest technology this realm has to offer. More than line with the divine metals of the Westlands. Why, this could withstand even a ballistic glass cannon shot. I'll take that bet. You can't discharge weapons here! Says who? I must say that he did withstand the blows. Let me buy that golem for you. Maybe you could do something to help it. Of course, it would be at half price. Well, what do you mean, half price? This golem's been shot. But you shot him! And you're alive. Half price. Very well, gentlemen. Be on your way. This thing is a mess. The back hatch on this abomination is held on by string. <clears throat> there. Wow. What a piece of trash. His insides are a wreck. All the cam ratios are off. Is that... Is that chicken bones? Or what is that smell? Epitaph. <clears throat> I'll bet you 10 gears this thing won't even make it back to the airship. I'll take that bet. Besides, in our haste, we forgot to bring anyone to carry all the supplies. Yeah, true. Come along, Golem. Matilda. I'll be sure to stop by the next time we're here. Say hi to the little ones for me. This place is new. Sort of like a little outdoor tea parlor. It'll be a nice change from the Green Lion, and I have some time before I need to get there. The seats are purple velveteen wingbacks with gold satin pillows. Small brass gilded tables hold small jewel-toned glasses with candles floating in water the color of the night sky. There even appear to be little stars in the glasses. A dark blue canopy covers the patio, and the star-like pattern appears again, made up of tiny spots of illumination. The one open table is in the very center of the patio, and so I make my way to it, unnoticed by the other patrons sitting with their tea. As I sit in against the wing back, I feel as though it wraps its comforting wings around me. Instantly, I feel safely tucked away from the rest of the bazaar pillow must be made of the softest down, and the breeze carries the scent of spices and tea. An elegantly dressed gentleman makes his way towards me. He smells of gingerbread and autumn, with eyes as blue as the ocean and hair as black as pitch. Good evening, my lady. 
Would you care to try a cup of jasmine tea? Yes, please. Very well. Nice to find a place like this at the Night Bazaar. A change from the usual unruly pubs. I'd always hoped to find a place like this. Back in my homeland, there are places similar where one can sit in quiet solitude, drink tea, read a book, with light music playing in the background and dimly lit. But I'd always wished for such elegance as this. I close my eyes and just let the sensations envelop me, feeling every fiber of the chair at my fingertips, breathing in the smells and listening to the symphony of muted conversations, clinking china, and music that permeate my surroundings. When I open my eyes, there stands an elderly lady in front of me with eyes the color of the silverware and hair the gray of doves. She looks soft and worn, like a favorite plush toy from childhood. There is a slight flicker reflected in her eyes, but it is only a fleeting moment and I'm not even sure I really saw anything. It was probably a trick of the light. Hello, dear. It looks like this place is full up. May I sit at this table with you? Yes, madam. It would be a pleasure. Here's your tea, my lady. Thank you. This is perfect. Quite possibly the best tea I've tasted. Oh, they have such a wonderful variety of teas here. So your name is Lady Epitaph? Of Epitaph Manor? Yes. But I don't remember mentioning... And your husband is Lord Epitaph, that rogue. Yes. And you... Mm, from another realm. The Sago. Werewolves. Portals. Mm-hmm. Yes, but... Just relax. Listen to my voice and the beautiful music and let your mind go. No. I... Attended the university. Ah, it is you. I thought I recognized the spiritual signature. Thought you could hide forever, didn't you? I can't. Close. You can't stop it, you know. You will lose everything if you try. The entity will have your portal. There is nothing you, your lord, or Professor Brassthorn can do about it. It remembers you. Who? From before. Long before. And this time it is prepared. This time, it is your turn to lose everything. Not even being the Mago Electi will save you. The realm doesn't have... Jasmine, stop! Get out of my head! Who are you? Broke the spell already. Your power has grown. Not that it will save you. <laughs> No, wait! Damn! Caught in a damned mind-unwinding spell. Good God! The entire tea parlor was a trick. Not a table or person left, just a blank wall. Teacup. There's no teacup. My wrist has been slashed and I've been drinking my own blood. Who the hell was that? And now the entity knows we're looking for it. And who I am. I need to clean this wound fast before I attract unwanted vampire attention. I'd better get to the Green Lion. Epitaph and Brassthorn are not going to like this. I need to go and see the Euclidean woman and pick up some metallurgy and chemistry supplies. Chemistry? Uh, alchemy. Ah. 
How do you know it's a woman or a man? Well, you see, you can tell there's this little thing that... <clears throat> Never mind. I have to do a transaction with her. I'll be only a minute. I'm amazed you speak the fish language of the Euclidians. It's a very similar dialect to the Cyclopeans back in the Steamlands. But these water dwellers here in the east have an accent like they're gargling sand. But it's fine. I look forward to brushing up on my haggling skills. It's been years since I've returned to the Night Bazaar. Yeah, take your time. I think I'll look for a nice trinket for Christine. I'll meet you back here later. This place has changed. The alleyways feel more cluttered than I remember. I'm losing my bearings. <laughs> what do you want, Wraith? The one who owns this world commanded this message. God and Master you speak of. You have been taken notice of. My Master is keeping watch on Epitaph Manor and all that dwell there within. Your polar trick on the sky wolves pales in to the power my master wields. This will is my master's. You, your witch, and that officer are all but an unnoticeable ripple in the surface of a grander design. Enjoy the moments of your pathetic, minute victory. You and this realm will know the prestige of a true renaissance. You will fall if you are bold. Wait. What master? Who are you? Damn, where did it go? You! Did you see the wraith? I need to find the lady and the professor. Ah, there he is. That's preposterous. There is no way I'm paying that much. Look, these mechanical tendrils are all rusted. My dear Euclidean woman, I'm afraid you just don't comprehend. Look. These seashells I've been paying you with for the past decade are very rare. They're from another planet, understand? A star. I can't get any more for a very long time. I'll pay you five. Sound good? Well, uh, Pleasure doing business with you. Now, remember, those are incredibly endangered. Take very good care of them. <gasps> You've been eating them?! Tony! Hey there. Ready to hit it? Uh, yeah. Let's burn. We have to meet up with Christine at the Green Lion Tavern. We're not alone. I just ran into... Look, those werewolves are staring at us. They were snarling at the Threnody Seal on our arms. They smell the sky wolves on us. I'm sure they already know what happened. I must say that the word of the Sky Wolves moved quickly. I'm surprised they made it this far so fast. As well as I. The Forest of Aeons has a way of knowing what its children have done. Even the outcasts. Yes, indeed. Uh, you were mentioning you ran into someone. Not someone, something. We need to find Christine and I will tell you both when we get to the Green Lion. Since then, I wasn't able to find a gift for my love. Well, look at this shop here. What shop is this? Look at that sign. It looks like it's been pieced together from several other signs. 
And what language is that? It looks like a bad form of scalar? Is that last piece backwards? Upside down? Let's go in and take a look. After you, pro I mean, Tony. Go away. We close. I mean, come in. Look around. What? This place is a mess. Hey, is that a fish head on the table? No, that lunch. What? That antique. The eyes are still blinking. That make cost extra. Hey, look. She's got a broom standing in the corner. That ancient witch's broom. It's got a dustpan under it. Oh no, that ancient witch's dustpan. Look at that vase. It has a huge crack on the back of it. It looks like they just dug it up out of the sand and turned the good side facing forward. Oh no, that seal of authenticity. Seal of authenticity? Yes, that mean very old. Hey, 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 I got a shrunken head! Oh, the children would love playing with that. With shrunken head, you get swollen foot. Swollen foot? Yes, you not know how to shrink head? You shrink head and rest go to foot. Of course. Psst. Look at the gnome hats lining across the shelf. Gnomes coming to store. We set trap. Trap full. See? Oh! oh my God. You want fresh gnome hat? Is that blood on that hat? Oh no, that make it waterproof. Hey, <laughs> I got an idea. Let's buy the gnome hat and put it on the golem. I had to stab him a few more times, but I got the... Oh. It's you two. The pickpocket. Just buy the hat and let's go. <sighs> How much for the hat? Two million. Two million? I mean, no hat free. You go now. Still close. I hate you. You're my favorite customer. Don't forget swollen foot. I don't want the swollen foot. No, you take. What am I going to do with a swollen foot? Take foot. Fine. Ah, the Green Lion Tavern. Perhaps she is waiting for us. Golem, make your way back to Airship Dream Strider. Here's your gnome hat. I don't see the lady yet. I haven't been here for a while. We'll sit there. Strange things are transpiring here tonight, and I don't want to be caught off guard. Good evening, gentlemen. What happened to your face? What happened to your wrist? You're bleeding! I got caught in a mind spell. I'm fine, but what I thought was tea I was drinking was really my own blood. Whoever it was knew our names and spoke of an entity. I encountered a wraith in the alley that spoke of a new god and master of the realm. This same entity, I presume? What kind of entity could have a power that could enslave an entire realm? I don't know. Maybe we can get some answers here. Is that who I think it is? Well, I haven't seen either of you for some time. You all know each other? I've known... The name is Jade Seraphine. Mm, I've known Jade Seraphine since my old nights as a blood runner. You always knew just the right ones to bring. I do miss the special ones you would handpick for me. I wasn't aware that you knew Epitaph. The Rogue. Or should I say Lord now? Jade and I campaigned together a few times. I recall the campaign of the Demon's Nurse as my very favorite. So you were a blood runner? You failed to mention this. That was during my first time living in the realm. I'm a different man now. <laughs> well, Professor, to me you'll always be the one behind the plague mask. Lady Epitaph, you are bleeding. Watch yourself, Jade. Worry not. I never drink from a spellcaster. Witch's blood tastes like smoke. Stay for the show. I am to perform in just a moment. Interesting vampire. What is she doing performing here? Last time I saw her, she was lurking at one of my regular blood dens. But she wasn't performing, she was more like freelancing. That is what she was doing in our band as well.
Is it? You two have a lot to explain to me once we head back. Barkeep, a round of roses for my friends. friends. The, the green wine just received a new shipment. Come, share a drink, drink with me. Ah, thank, thank you. A toast to old friends in the new darkness. darkness. Salty. Jade, we need some information. It, it will cost, cost you. Of course. We are being watched by something. Something which threatens the entire realm. It has the power to destroy doors of light and has enslaved an entire fleet of airship werewolves. Dogs are meant to be trained. Spoken like a true vampire. We need to know whether the vampire city of Catril knows anything concerning the seal we bear. The seal? Jade? Catril has exiled me. All intel gained from within the tower walls have been from defectors who are already diabolized. But what I do know is that the word of your events with those wretched werewolves has been making the rounds. The manor's dark reputation remains intact. Dark? Coming from a vampire? I shall take that as a deep compliment. As you should. My superiors have taken an interest in Epitaph Manor and cast an eye upon it. But no vampire dares to come near the manor from now. You are safe in that regard. For what I know, the Prince of Catril wishes no war at this time with you. Perhaps the Prince is biding time. Time is our gift. Blood and secrets are our currency. I believe in this new Prince. And without such leadership, the Blood Renaissance would have never come to be. Now we enjoy a prosperity of free blood trade, and the days of the human stables are at an end. Do you know anything about this seal? I will ask around. Now, as for my payment. Lord, Epitaph, 
I wish to drink a taste of your blood. Not gonna happen, and you know it. Some secrets don't have to be told. Not when they can be tasted. Oh, very well. Then I wish to taste the professor's blood. Well... Time to go, gentlemen. Hey, look! A gnome! I just barely escaped that damn scalar woman's trap. Hey, are you the jergoffs who own that golem walking outside? He's wearing my hat. Toss the gnome! Yeah! Run! Till next time, Jane! Crazy you bastards! Made it back to the Dream Strider. Hey, look, the golem's coming. Still keeping your word on that bet? We'll see. It has to cross the cargo lift. He broke down. Right at the platform. There goes all our glass vials. Well, his upper half did make it on the ship. Hmm. Uh, let's call it even? Agreed. Let's cast off. Goodbye, Night Bazaar. Is that a swollen foot?